Hello, everybody. Welcome to our first NCA webinar for 2022. We are so excited that we have two amazing musicians joining me today on the NCA webinar. I can see all the numbers jumping up as you all enter. We'll just give you a couple of minutes as it's climbing and you're all desperate to hear what Katie and amazing Erin have to share with us today about music making. Um, I hope you managed to join us for the launches. Um, we had a great time on Sunday sharing everything that we're going to do, and uh, we just can't wait to get started. So let's kick things off. Um, Katie Stillman is an amazing violinist who's going to be working with us on our projects program, program. And Aaron is an incredible trumpeter who is also going to be working with us on our projects program. And I'm going to ask them uh, one by one to introduce themselves. So let me just get my screen share up and here we go. So. Katie, I'm sorry. Hello, hi everyone. Hello, Katie, tell us what, what you, excuse me, carry on Katie. Okay, hi everyone, I'm Katie. Um, I, you can probably tell from my accent that I am not British, I'm not from here. I'm Canadian actually. Um, I do have British parents, so you know, I like to join in. Yeah, exactly, see that always makes me really happy. A little glow to my heart when I see the Canadian flag. So I've been living in England now for oh, 20 years. And, um, but you still, still seeing the Canadian flag makes me feel, makes me feel like that's home. So yeah, I am, I'm a violist. So that is an amazing picture of my string quartet the Villiers Quartet, and I really enjoy working with them. I, we work on lots of really interesting repertoire. We commissioned some new pieces from some composers recently, um, all doing slightly different things. It was sort of a response to all the lockdown things. We also ask young students such as yourselves to write pieces for us. And we work with, with them online and they write little quartets for us and then we film them afterwards. So that's really fun. We also play things like Beethoven and Delius and Smy, all those exciting things. So that's really fun. So that's my quartet. Yeah. Great. Um, sorry, have I come out of the screen share? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, here we go again. So keep going. So okay. you also have orchestra. You also play in orchestras? I do play in orchestras. So I love leading orchestras. I really get a real buzz. So that's Caroline Pether, my colleague at Manchester Camerata, and myself. And we both lead. Uh, Manchester Camerata together which is really nice so sometimes she directs and leads and sometimes it's me oh and this is one of my favorite concerts ever which was playing the Berlioz Fant Symphony Fantastique and Aurora Orchestra do these amazing projects I hope you've seen them online of memorizing the whole orchestra memorizes a piece now that probably isn't that difficult for any of you guys but you know when we get old our brain cells slow down a little bit and we think that we can't do it anymore, but actually we can, it's totally fine. We just have to remind ourselves that it takes time to do it. Like you, you know, practicing your pieces, you just don't practice them once, you practice them lots of times. So you can't really see me because I'm behind the conductor's bum. So you see that hand at the conductor's bum, that's me. So, but I'm wearing a really cool mask like everyone else. And it was a really fun thing to do. So each of the movements, we had a different thing to do and I had to memorize steps and things. And I think in one of them I had to sing and that was terrifying. Not on my own, obviously, but even learning the words was difficult. So, uh, yeah. So it's, a was great, really it's a great neat. concert. And you also teach, Katie, you do lots of other things beyond. I do. I love teaching. So I teach at Cheatham School of Music, which I really enjoy doing. But I also, that's a little picture from the Purcell School where I was recording the new ABRSM syllabus. So if you are any of you doing exams, you might notice in the back, there are little CDs that come with it. And they created some really fun ways of doing it. So they sometimes, we record in different rooms. So the pianist that was playing with me is on that video screen that you can see the little TV. And I had headphones on and we recorded it at the same time, but in different rooms so that you could just listen to the violin or just listen to the piano. So it's really cool. It's a really fun way of doing it. A bit stressful, obviously. Um, but you know, I, I have to say grade eight stuff. I had to practice quite hard. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's lots of, I'm in some of the, not, not every grade, but quite a few of them. But yeah, I really enjoy doing it. It's great. Fantastic. And ah. I saw from your social media, you played a Stradivarius recently. I did. I've actually had two chances to play strads in my life which for more than just a little little tune and I was well actually it wasn't really given to me a colleague of mine was playing it and he asked me if I would have a go and this strad is extra special as you can see some people call it the guitar strad 
And it was the one that Joshua Bell played when he was about, I would say he was probably 14 or 15, um, but it was the first Strad that he did his recordings on. And there are some old, um, the, some of the original CDs, um, one of his first CDs, he was playing the Strad. So it's a beautiful sound, really deep sound, really amazing. But yeah, it's just, you know, you're walking around and you're carrying a, a violin case and it happens to have a Strad in it. <laughs> amazing, wow, fantastic. And you're working with us, Katie, in Bolton uh, on our projects program. So I know some of you um, listening and watching today will be on our projects program. Some will be on a national program. And Katie is going to be working with our projects orchestra in Bolton School. And we'll come back to the music that we're going to be working with you on in a minute. Uh, and don't be don't miss her welcome video. If you're working on those projects, there's a welcome video on the website, especially for you from Katie about what we're going to be doing. Ah, now for something completely different. <laughs> Actually, that, that, that finger is quite neatly pointing to you on my screen, Aaron. That's excellent. Oh, Here it? we have Aaron. Hey! Ha 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 ha. so much fun. <laughs> Look at me. Oh, goodness. Yeah, this, I mean, this photo, I mean, it was actually like an outtake. It wasn't one that was meant to be <laughs> meant to be professionally edited and whatever. Um, but the my friend who was taking the photo was like, oh, we have we have to keep this one. We have to keep this one. I was like, okay, if you insist. Um, but yeah, hi, my name is Aaron. Sorry, I'm a bit like, whoosh, I had a lot of coffee. Uh, my name is Aaron and I'm a trumpet player. Um, and yeah, I'm living in London, but I am originally from Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, but my dad is from Nigeria, hence the Nigerian Scottish flag. It looks lovely. Um, the... Uh, I'm trying to think what I went to, so I went to school in Edinburgh. I went to uh, St Mary's Music School. Oh, hey, and there it is. Oh goodness, it takes me back. Um, yeah, I went to St Mary's, which is this minuscule school, minuscule school um, in Edinburgh, where uh, I started there when I was eight years old, which means crazy to think about. Um, and I was uh, a chorister, like a choir boy for four years. Um, and then my voice decided to, you know, stop being high. Uh, and so mm -hmm. I made the trumpet my, my first study, I guess my most important thing. And I continued at the school until uh, I moved down to London uh, to study at the Royal Academy of Music. Um, I'm trying to think what else there is about me. Oh, and here, here, here I am with my friends in the said Royal Academy of Music. This is my uh, brass quintet. Uh, we're called Connaught Brass. Um, and all of us know each other from different places. So the girl in the front, Robin, with the French horn, we both went to school together at St. Mary's and I've known her since I was nine years old. Um, and then the guy just behind me, Chris, uh, with the trombone, I did National Youth Orchestra with, um, as well as the tuba player, Aled, he also did National Youth Orchestra. And then the other trumpeter, Harry, um, I met in my second year of studying uh, at music college. So it's like a nice mix of people and we, you know, we play a lot together. We had the the, the honour and privilege of getting to play at the Lucerne Festival in August um, in Switzerland, uh, which is kind of a big deal. And I like think about it now, I'm like, oh my God, what? Um, so we did that um, and we're playing in Italy sometime soon and just a lot of concerts around England as well. So it's nice to, to be able to do that. And the other part of my life, um, normally I'm like sat right at the back of this stage rather than at the front, but I got, you know, I got to have my diva moment and be a uh, soloist playing Haydn Trumpet Concerto with the Chinake Orchestra, uh, which is a uh, the UK's first uh, black and minority ethnic uh, orchestra. Um, and it was actually the first professional orchestra I ever got to play with. Um, when I, as I say, when I first moved down to London to study, I um, was almost 18. I was still, still, I was very young for my year. So I started university at 17. Um, and just before I started term, uh, I 
got an email from this this woman called Chi Chi uh, who runs the Chinake Orchestra. Uh, she's amazing. And she asked me if I wanted to come and play trumpet in this uh, in this orchestra because uh, she had heard me in a National Youth Orchestra concert and um, yeah, thought it would be good for me to do. What she didn't tell me was that the person that would be playing first trumpet was actually the principal trumpet of the New York Met Opera, uh, who is, you know, arguably one of the, the best trumpeters in the world. And then the 17 year old me <laughs> trying to play next to this guy. And um, I mean, what's funny, I mean, this guy was lovely. His name's Billy and he's like really short. Um, and he just like is the loveliest guy. But like when he plays the trumpet, it's just like, Whoa! like amazing sounds. And then I was just saying like, bah, bah, bah. like it, it was not it. But I mean, you know, I learned on the job, learned very quickly. Uh, <laughs> But uh, no, that's that's a that's an important part of my life as well at the moment. And lockdown, you got had got up to some fun in lockdown. Oh, absolutely, because I um, I was meant to be practicing for my final recital, which is the the big exam that you do at the end of your music degree. Um, but they had no idea when it was, uh, and I got bored of practicing my pieces. So I decided that I was going to um, make a, a quintet of myself, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but um, what I, I set out to, I mean, this is it's on my YouTube. If, if you want to Google me or, you know, search me out, uh, then you can watch the video there. But it's, um, you'll see, uh, or when you go to watch it, that I decided that I was trying to be very serious and very professional in the way that I was recording this and it had to be perfect. Um, but of course, recording five people in one take perfectly is very hard. So the first, the bottom two parts are, you know, quite serious. I'm sat there and I got to trying to record the third part and realized that I kept making mistakes. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna make the most of this. And so, I, so the, the top three parts are more of a comedic, if things go wrong, we make faces and pretend to, you know, oh, what are you doing? Like uh, myself and all this sort of thing. So it was, uh, it was entertaining uh, to say the least. And also nice, nice to, to make that. mistakes and it not, <laughs> not be like an issue at all. Um, and if anything, yeah, make a joke out of it. So it was nice, yeah. I kept myself entertained. Um, and finally? Yeah, I mean, uh, speaking of lockdowns, this beautiful uh, stage, which is in uh, that is in Snape Maltings, uh, was the last concert I did, literally the day before that big lockdown that happened before last Christmas. Um, I remember we were driving to the place uh, and looking at the news, and it was saying that you know all travel was going to be cancelled. Now, I was meant to be going home for Christmas in Edinburgh, and I was kind of freaking out that I was gonna get to the airport and just be turned away at the door. Um, but we had, to do, we had to do the concert. So it was this weird, like, I mean, the concert was amazing. It was like, one, it was the most fun uh, concert I'd done in a long time. Uh, but the whole time, it was sort of in the back of my head, like, am I going to be stuck in my flat on my own for the next like few months because I can't go home um but I mean I, I did manage to get home it was all fine guys don't worry um and yeah I mean it was a fabulous concert as well so it's all a win-win situation brilliant amazing thank you both of you for introducing yourself so so well I should just tell you everybody out there that if you want to ask questions um, you can just put them in the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. If you tap on the Q&A, you can type in a question and we'll do our best to ask these amazing people uh, as many of your questions as possible. And there are also going to be some polls, which, oh, actually, there's a poll already. OK, ah, so this is our first poll for you to vote on. Um, the best birthday present Aaron ever received was a drum kit from my aunt, ticket to hear Wynton Marcellus from my aunt, a pocket trumpet from my aunt or a ride on electric tractor from my aunt. I want okay. to vote on this. I can't vote <laughs> on it. I know exactly which one I would choose. I mean, that's the one. I... 
Oh, we'll have to sort that out next. I can see people are voting. Um, we've had 62 votes so far. It's climbing, climbing, climbing. I wish my eyes were generous. I know, I'm <laughs> giving you good presents. That's what I want to know. <laughs> Just, was that was it the one-off best present and then since then it's gone down possibly <laughs> Yeah, that's it. I've just never gotten a gift since. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what happened. No. Well, she's going to be famous now because she's yeah. going to be on YouTube for having given you this gift. So let's see. Drum roll. What did people think? Um, I will share the results of the poll. People thought, 49% people thought she bought you a pocket trumpet. Is that right, Erin? You guys know me far too well. That is absolutely <laughs> correct. Oh, yeah. I was going for the ride on electric tractor. That's the one I <laughs> My nephew has one of them. And oh my God, when he got that, I thought it was the best thing I'd ever seen. Amazing. Oh, well, now I'm jealous. Now yeah, the public think... trumpet doesn't seem that exciting. Oh, no, no, it's cool. But no, it was fabulous. <laughs> I remember, because uh, I mean, when I was younger, obviously I still love the trumpet, it's wonderful. But I mean, particularly when I was younger, I was a big trumpet nerd. Um, and the idea of me, like getting this tiny little box and me having no idea what it was going to be, to open it up, and it be, I mean, in reality, now my face is a lot bigger. So it's probably about the size of my face. Um, uh, at the time, of course, I mean, I can't remember how old I was. Maybe eight, eight years old. And literally you could put it in your pocket. Is that, that's how it works? It's like- No, it's kind around. of, um, what's the word? I mean, it's, it's a dis disillusioning title for the, the instrument. I mean, it's, pro it's probably about, that size um very I'm high if I can is see very something high? Is that no the... so that's the thing it's yeah. exactly the same pitch as a, a normal one but it's just like super compact mm -hmm. um and it was great it made me you know because I was quite sure as well that it made me look quite cute with my little you see when you say trumpet, trumpet nerd that sounds much cooler than violin nerd I think violin nerd you get nerdy about things like strings and oh, rosin. Yeah. it's not cool is it no, you have to, I mean, people are like violin nerds, but honestly, what they talk about is strings. <laughs> it's, yeah, see, see, it's just not cool. Oh, uh, you know, we can try, we can try. <laughs> I got, I've got a nice question uh, for you now that's just come in, which uh, is how did you each choose your instruments? Which is a really lovely question. Don't know who it's from, but it's a lovely question. Thank you for asking that. Katie, why did you choose the violin or did someone choose it for you? Well, I was really small when I started. I was four when I started playing the violin. And I, I don't know, I mean, I have children now. I'm my a five and a two-year-old. I, I mean, my son, there's no way he'll play the violin. But my daughter, who's two, she loves having a go. And it's funny, I don't know if, I, I think we went to a concert or something and my parents sort of encouraged it. But that's as much, my parents both loved music and I think they were keen. So that's sort of how I got in. But after a while, it was just, that was the only thing I knew how to do. So <laughs> I didn't ever play anything else really. I tried the piano, but I'm really rubbish. So uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's another question. Somebody asked, do you play any other instruments? So not really, no. No, what no, about no. you, Aaron? I have did bad you touch, touch? Apparently, Aaron. Oh. Sorry to you, Aaron. How did you did you do the um did you do the anything other than trumpet or why and why did you choose trumpet? Well, I mean, so um, I mean, I said I was a trumpet nerd. In reality, I'm just a massive music nerd. Um, my pastime when I was like thirty. Ooh, this is so cringe. Me thinking about this now. <laughs> my pastime was like looking up like fingering charts for like wind instruments. Like I. So technically I could play the flute, the clarinet, the saxophone, like I know how it works. Like if you threw one in my hand, like I'll give you the scales. Like I know what's going on. But um, no, that's my amazing. stuff- That's That's not nerd, that's so cool. I honestly, it just doesn't work like that with the violin. Cool. No, I mean, it's it's fine. It was, but I mean, I went to music school, so it was kind of, I wasn't too weird. Um, but the, uh, no, my starting was, um, was was good fun actually in the my both both my parents aren't musicians uh, but my mum played the flute when she was in high school and my dad wanted to learn the trumpet so I had bought one just out of like a charity shop or whatever just like a basic Yamaha student model um and it was just one day that we were cleaning out the loft in in our house uh this would be when I was five and uh both of these were brought down and of course like you know the flute and the trumpet they were quite shiny um, so I'm like, ooh, exciting. Um, uh, my mom showed me how to like make a sound on the flute because you know that's always like that thing that no one can do, but I could. Um, yeah. And then the the trumpet as well. I mean, obviously my dad 
hadn't even tried to learn it, but you know, was you, know, you just put it on your mouth, and, and uh, I can make a sound out of that as well. Um, and obviously not good, uh, but the back back in the day when uh, there used to be ads in the newspaper for things, there was an ad for a local uh, trumpet teacher. Uh, so it was just perfect timing in that I literally went along to this lesson and um, with this woman called Sally, who's fabulous. And I owe my entire career to her essentially in that she was beyond enthusiastic this five-year-old kid just like farting down the trumpet being like this has to continue this is wonderful <laughs> yes and um yeah i kept kept playing the trumpet Aaron. since then um actually but... that's talking about age erin we've just had somebody somebody typed in um was erin in nco last year given that our children are seven to fifth seven to fourteen um, um so <laughs> i I was actually, uh, I just had a massive growth spurt um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, it was great fun last year, <laughs> loved all the music, uh, no, I'm not, I, wi I wish, I wish I was that young, um, I still I pretend that I am, um, but no, I was not in NCO last year. Um, but obviously there might have been somebody who is emulating you in NCO at the moment, you see? I mean, I can understand yeah. why. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of people, there are a few, few have right, written in to say they're choristers and, and that, so that's nice. That's, that is hey. a very sound. Yeah, I've had that. That. that skill. It's amazing, that skill. I have to say, I, that's the thing I wish I could learn, had learnt when I was small. Um, how to yeah. sing harmony. I can only, I'm not a soprano. I, my voice is sort of the lower end and um, I find it hard not to sing the tune. You could say that's a violin problem, but um, <laughs> I do find it oh, really hard. <laughs> no, 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 I get that. I think that, I mean, it's amazing actually the, the, the chorister thing in the, essentially I'd be doing a service on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and two on Sunday. Um, and there was almost different music every single day that just like the amount of uh the sheer amount of music you're getting through um in terms of like transferable skills to now is that i'm very used to like learning music very quickly and being able to sight read things um a lot faster it was like very helpful uh for that and then you know everything else of listening and um i guess like all genres of music from like early medieval stuff to stuff that was literally written the week before you know it's a massive spectrum of stuff oh wow another poll excellent this one's about katie Brilliant. katie uh -huh. had an epic fail concert moment uh what was it <laughs> okay she played a concerto in hong kong with her dress on backwards and the label hanging out uh, she left her music off stage in a concert in Hong Kong and the whole audience and orchestra had to wait while she went off to get it. Or she was leading an orchestra in Hong Kong and she managed to flick her slip on shoe into the lap of someone in the front row <laughs> of the audience. I love all of the alternatives. I know the answer to this, but I think the others are great. <laughs> Well, they actually are real epic fails from other guests that we've had on Brilliant. our other shows. So they're genuine things that have happened to people. So the answers are coming in, rolling in 63, 66, 74. Whoa. Buzzing, 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 buzzing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you think it is, Aaron? Just a matter of oh, interest. Yeah. So I thought I thought it was the middle one. I think you left your music off stage. That's yeah. my guess. That's what you think. Okay. This Let's well, see. Guess. It's a close. I'll end the poll and share the results. Actually, most people think that that is the one, Erin, they're with you. Is, tell us, Katie, are they correct? They are, you're right. I, it was so embarrassing. I was at the front of the orchestra and I had taken my music off to be really diligent and practice a little sent, a phrase. Cause I was like, I just need to practice this bit. So I took it off, never do that. But you know, I did that. So I had it off stage and I walked on with everyone else. You know, when you walk on with your orchestra colleagues, you're all having a nice little chat, it's feeling really good. And we sat down and I, in the old days where, you know, you shared a music stand, I opened the music stand, <laughs> the music folder and the music wasn't there. And there were actually, it's pretty bad. They all had to wait while, but the other thing was that there were multiple doors on the side of this hall. It was a really big stage in Hong Kong. 
and I had to turn around and it's quite a small orchestra. It was the Academy of St. Martin in the Fields and they're quite small, you know, 25 people, 30 people. So I, they all were sitting in the middle and I had to walk off stage I had to, and then I couldn't get off the door and I had to keep looking for the right door to get out. It was so, and then I had to walk back on, you know, with high heels here, clip, 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 clip. So yes, that's my epic, epic fail. Yeah. That is brilliant. It reminds me actually, and it's kind of like, I guess the, the, the virtual equivalent in the, in my brass quintet, we now all play on iPads. And uh, fortunately this didn't happen to me because I would absolutely freak out. Um, but the tuba player, Aled, we went to start the first piece and uh, you have like, oh, I've got them here. <clears throat> you have these like little pedal things that turn the pages for you at your feet. Um, and long story short, he went to turn the page and it was blank. Like the, the, the music just disappeared. And so he tried to turn back a page and now that page went blank. And so he's trying to tap on the screen and nothing is there. Nothing is there, it's just white screen, no, <laughs> no music. Um, and the thing is the rest of us, of course, are like still playing and like looking at the corner of our eye, like what's going on, why isn't he playing? Um, and Alad is not, he's not the type of person to like try and just like busk it through or like try and remember, like, so he just sat there like with the tuba up and we had the piece finished. And we started like, people in the audience like, Missing a bit of a, a crucial line with the tuba. Like the, the tuba just suddenly <laughs> cut out. Um, <laughs> and, um, That's the danger I mean, of, of the, the iPad pedal, isn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm on the cusp. I keep thinking I, I, I won't do it. And then I think about the convenience of it and it's brilliant, but that's the danger. I can yeah. really see that moment. Oh. No, it is a another light. question for you both. Um, a favorite musical moment. Do you want to kick off, Katie? Oh, favorite musical. Well, I get I get quite excited about a lot of musical moments, actually. I, I'm often the sort of, I mean, I love opera, so I love playing for people that do opera. I love playing with my quartet, I get a real buzz. So I I, I can't think of one. I mean, I think the the Berlioz Symphony Fantastique, the picture you showed before, that will always stick in my mind as a really incredible moment because it only exists in that moment ex itself. You know, it's not something that you're gonna be repeating next year um, yeah. just because you have to get all those people together. And I said, yeah, so maybe let's let's stick with that one. That's one yeah. of my favorites. And that is on YouTube, isn't it, I think? So yeah. if you guys wanna go and watch it, that performance is up there and it is, it is, it is brilliant. Aaron, do you have any a favorite moment? I know it's hard to say one, but. Um... Yeah, I don't know. That I'm tuba always... moment. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that was it. You know, that was great. I love uh, laughing at my friend's failures. Uh, no, the... <laughs> I'm trying to think. I don't know. I guess uh, similarly, I like, I, I do, I feel like I do so many different things that it's it, it's hard to to narrow it down to what, I mean, playing in the, the Lucerne Festival was pretty amazing. That's definitely like a, a highlight for sure. Um, uh, another one, I mean, so when I was at the, the Royal Academy of Music, we played this amazing piece by Strauss, uh, his Fest Music for Brass Ensemble, which is on the Academy's YouTube channel. And it was, I guess, like a, a, a long moment, we'll call it a long musical moment, in that we, we had our first rehearsal um, and it was the first brass project of the year. And there were a lot of new new members to the department. And so we all sort of like, didn't really know each other. And like, we sat down to play this piece and it was like, so together and like, so in tune and musically we're all like bouncing off each other. And it was just like, felt really good. Um, and then of course we then had like a week to rehearse it before we then performed it. So it was, it felt already up here and we just like whoosh, made it, um, made it feel like sensational and amazing. I mean, so I think for me, certainly during uh, during my time at Academy, that was a, for sure a highlight. That sounds great. And actually that is that's something of what children experience, I think at NCO, sort of coming together with like-minded people. And you think, wow, what could this be? And it already starts like pretty good. And then suddenly through the week, you think, ah, oh, could we dare exactly. to read? dare to reach for that and and then it then it become you know if you dare it sort of becomes becomes a reality amazing so we have another poll oh, dear. Not Aaron this time 
Guilty food or drink pressure, pleasure. Orange Fanta, Iron Brew, 7-Up or Coca-Cola. What do we think? And while they're doing that, the next question I'm going to ask is, come, is coming from Isla is, do you have a musical pet peeve? So have a little think Ooh. about things that there's quite a nice question. What, what, anything that sort of slightly irritates you in the musical world? Uh, I tell you, can tell you that Iron Brew is doing pretty well in the poll at the moment. Well, there's <laughs> a little okay. bit of a Scottish influence, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, slightly. Come on. <laughs> There's been, there's going to be some more Scottish answers in there, like red cola. Do you do you know what red cola is? A cherry cola. Is it cherry? No, 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 no. 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 Oh. Red, red cola. I'm, I'm going to find a photo. <laughs> no, well, 7-Up <laughs> feels very North American. I mean, I don't see it here so much. You normally get Sprite here, don't you? Seven oh, it's done. Let's hear. Ah, there we go. So, there we are. Drum roll. The result is 50% think it's Iron Brew. Are they right, Erin? That is absolutely correct, yes. Well done. Amazing. Got three out of the, three so far. Brilliant. See, red cola yeah. is this. Oh. <laughs> and it, do, it doesn't Never taste like cola. It's just bright Ooh. red sugar. Right. Mm. Um, but it's great. You get it in like the chippy <laughs> or whatever. Good. Okay, another uh, question. Um, you want our pet peeves? Did you want oh, to your pet peeve? peeve? Of course, yeah, your pet peeve. I was I thinking of no, my go pet, peeve. pet peeve, Katie. Oh, well, my pet peeve actually is when conductors say, let's just put a crescendo in here and then a diminuendo here. And then bar 34, let's put another crescendo in here and another diminuendo. And what they're really saying is, shall we phrase better? Shall we phrase to this bar? Instead, they say, let's put a crescendo in here. And everybody has to get out their pencil and write a little crescendo and a little diminuendo. It is my pet peeve. I think we could do it better. We don't have to do that. And when you get yeah. some conductors want a lot of phrasing, and so your page is littered with crochet hairpins. <laughs> That's my there's my pet peeve. So what if I say you? that in yeah. Bolton, everyone, you know, <laughs> you're gonna be like, nah, -uh. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna hold you to that. Here. You won't. Don't worry, Caroline won't do that. Yeah. Uh, and Erin, pet peeve. I guess uh, I, I was trying to think of one, but I'll, I'll keep it on brand of conductor. When they say <laughs> one last time, oh, yes. and you do it. 10 more times that especially when it's the end of the day you're like looking at the clock and it's like okay we, we have five we have five minutes let one last time and then you know early finish get back have a bath go to bed you know it's great when it's 10 times more and you're like hey you know that that's kind of it's I think difficult. That's I sometimes to my students say, you know, oh, just just do it one more time. I realize I should never do that, should I? I should be like, okay, let's do it again. Is yeah, that better? yeah. Let's let's try again. Yeah. Again, I'm going to try and change my language. Everyone, you have to keep me to it. Can I give you? I'm going to throw one in. The yeah. Conductors that go go to go to get ready, and you will put your instruments up, and then they go, ah, oh, just one more thing, and everyone goes. <laughs> Guys. And I think it's not worse as bad for us as it is for the wind of brass who've already breathed, right? Because I always think you. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> oh, actually, there's that, there's that noise, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> and they don't just. The problem with these conductors, I mean, uh, obviously conductors are wonderful, but um, the problem with these conductors, they, that's not just something they do once, is it? It happens a lot. So it's not that you. Yes. So it's that you know, it's a pattern. I, I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. I'm just going to quickly do another little screen share to show um, everybody what's going on at NTO and remind you. Uh, so um, I'll just keep it like this. I think what's been going on at NCO. So uh, we've had our launches. So I hope you saw them. If you didn't have a chance to see them, go catch up on them. They're on the website, I think, or they will be very soon for you to catch up. I hope you found your login, got into the website, found your way around, found, found your music it's there found where to find lots of inspiration and creative stuff and well-being and pick and mix. Uh, we are going to do a webinar selfie, the first of 2022 at the end of this webinar. So if you have any anything you want to bring into the webinar selfie, like your instrument or a funny hat or a prop of some sort, you might want to think about what you, I think these guys have already got some things ready. I don't know what I'm they planning. are. They're very exciting, yeah, ready for the yeah. webinar selfie. So what happens is, is we'll do a pose on the screen and then if you if you stand so that you can be seen in in the, in the screen with with us in the background and get someone to take a picture of you or take a selfie of yourself with us in the background then we'll get some fun pictures and we'll put them up on the gallery in the website and you go onto the gallery and click on the dropbox link and it will take you straight to where you where you um, upload your pictures and we'll share them on the gallery 
Now, next week, um, we have the Taskmaster Challenge. And um, many of you will have seen the, the, some of the Taskmasters that we did last time. Um, and so uh, we don't know what the challenge is yet. He's going to launch it next Thursday. So let's, um, we, we don't even know what it is yet. So that's going to be a lot to look forward to. Uh, if you're looking for something to do on the website, go to the, the Wellbeing Welcomes and also the, all the Wellbeing videos on all these amazing things that are really important to your musical journeys. And you can just dip in and learn something in 10 minutes um, that's that will really be helpful. And there's also the Naxos uh, Music Box and the Naxos Listening Library and our whole YouTube channel of amazing interviews with amazing musicians. And the final, um, the next webinar that we're going to have like this is going to be with the amazing Nate Holder, who's working on our projects program in London and in Bolton, uh, Bolton in the summer, and Debbie Wiseman, who has written a piece for our uh, main orchestra that has been orchestrated especially for our main orchestra. It, it's from the Carnival of the Endangered Animals and it's the Blue Whale and it's a really epic score. Um, so she's going to be joining us to tell us a little bit about that. So that's the update from NCO. And so where are we? Let's see if we've got any uh, questions. Favourite composer? Oh. oh, that's always a hard one. Don't you think yeah. that was hard? Every time I'm playing something, I think this is my favourite. And then it that I go play something else and think this is my favorite. <laughs> what do you think, Aaron? What's your favorite composer? Um, for actually, I do have an answer. My uh, favorite composer is Ravel. Ooh, um, I I just I I mean I I love French French music. Um, full stop. Um, but yet, yeah, I mean, like the piano stuff, the orchestra stuff, like the, Mother Goose. the, the oh. solo instrument, I mean, it's all like incredible. Like it's it's really nice, and I, for me, it's very, um, especially when it's you know uh, program music, like telling a story. That it's for me, it is incredibly clear. I think there's just something in my brain that like matches up very well to that. Um, so that's my answer. Yeah. So go. So you can go and listen, guys, to on the Naxos Listening Library. There'll be masses of Ravel. So where would you start? Like La Valse or Mother Goose or where, what, what would you recommend as a first dip your toe into the Ravel? Mm. String quartet? Nah. <laughs> piano music, some of the piano music. I mean, that, uh, Goose. Well, I guess, I mean, Mother Goose is like, it has a story. It's, it's a story yeah. that most, most people know. I guess that's quite easy. I mean, I guess the, the absolute classic is Bolero. Um, yeah. I mean, that's not necessarily so interesting although I was obsessed with that piece I could listen to that on repeat even though the piece literally does that <laughs> yeah. uh, so I don't know what don't know what I was doing um listening on repeat on repeat mm. um that or I mean just anything I don't know that um it makes shuffle press shuffle and rebel and then <laughs> yeah. shuffle just listen to rebel, it all shuffle. Yeah, I mean there's yeah. so many great pieces aren't there yeah mm -hmm. see I'm inspired I'd, I'd say rebel I mean for me, like I recently was playing a, a Mendelssohn Quartet, Opus 13. And actually it, uh, when I was playing it, I just, I, th I said to my quartet, I said, this is why I play the violin. <laughs> it was just, the music is amazing. It's glorious. It's so full of energy and like fervor. And I, I loved it. I, I love it. It's such a great piece. So that's the Quartet Opus 13 in A minor, but um, there's so much, ooh, ah. Uh, Oh, another poll. Drum roll for another poll. The best birthday cake Aaron ever had was a Colin the Caterpillar, a Thomas the Tank Engine, an In the Night Garden Ninky Nonk cake, or a Peppa Pig and the Dinosaur cake. What is it? That's now, see, I know that it should be George and the Dinosaur, shouldn't it? Peppa Pig's brother, because my daughter is obsessed with the cake, <laughs> you know, and I know these things now. But, you know, ah, it could be Peppa Pig. that's a bit of a clue. Stolen it. So, drum roll, 71 Nicky. voted so far. It's going up quite well. Colin's in the lead, I have to say. Now, was it Cuthbert or Colin? That's the question. Although <laughs> maybe if it was last year, it could have been Cuthbert, you see. But if we're talking 10 years ago, maybe maybe Cuthbert hadn't been invented, hadn't been born yet. Uh, yeah. That is brilliant. Maybe it's still Thomas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, let's see. I think pretty much everyone's voted now. Let's see, okay. drum roll. What did they think? Ooh. They think it's a Colin. Uh, are they right, Aaron? <laughs> No. Nope. <laughs> right, guys. Which one? You know, actually, Colin 
I hate that cake. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. You have to be very I, careful. People love um, that cake. I yeah. Yeah, no, sorry, I'm probably like I'm gonna get cancelled. I'm gonna like offend people. No, um You're not so fond of it. Maybe that's a better way of putting yes, it. Yes, sorry, yeah. We're we're just not best mates, Colin and I. Um but no, it was a uh, <laughs> it's so funny, this question. No, it was a Thomas the Tank Engine cake. Aww. Um because I was obsessed, uh, I guess I'm sort of still am with Thomas the Tank Engine. I love trains as a kid. That was my big um that was my big thing, other than music. Um, and Ooh, there we go. Oh, there are the answer. I mean, it, it was it, close. It was quite well. It was close. Yeah. But in the that garden was close, though. I, you know, Ninky Nonk. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, the kids do. I, bet I know. Well, I know what in the night garden you not that, that far away. <laughs> Isn't that the like flying thing? Oh, is it? No, it's the training I so. thing. I mean, this is oh, this is when train. you know I have like young younger train. brothers, so I I'm not watching in the night garden. I promise. Um, <laughs> that's not my like my pastime, um, <laughs> other than playing the trumpet, watching like three year old TV. So yeah, let's I mean... quickly, we're running out of time, which is a shame because we can carry on with this forever. But should we quickly just uh, talk about the pieces that you're going to be working with us? So, Katie, do you want to kick off with the Bartok pieces? Yes. So we're going to be working on the Romanian folk dances written by Bartok. Now, Bartok was amazing at going around um, and finding these little bits of tunes, these sort of folk tunes that he heard in because every village had their own tune and he used to walk around and record some of them and transcribe them into music. And these folk dances um, are written for violin and orchestra. And they just are really, each of them are really different and have a little story. And you have to sort of capture the imagination of each one in about a minute. So it's no pressure or anything, but it, it's a really good way of getting the imagination going. And I know that there's some, there can be some really fun improvised improvisatory moments before where I sort of look into some of the characters of each of the movements before we play them so yeah, yeah. that's going to be fun great thank you and Aaron you've got three different very different pieces that you're going to be playing with us yeah it's um I mean it's always the case with the trumpet trumpet pieces are never very long so that's why I'm doing three sorry diva moment um but no it's uh the the first piece of piece by Telemans is a baroque um march um and then the next pieces are like french um 20th century uh quite sort of like cheeky light fun piece um and then to to finish is this uh this piece by sammy nastico who i i didn't actually know at all but from looking up is uh was very um uh what's the word i mean he he, he wrote a lot for the oh now i'm forgetting the, the orchestra the big jazz orchestra in the, the states anyway he uh is a, a jazz Marcellus? composer and arranger Vinton Marcellus's orchestra no older than that okay I'm forgetting I would I have it somewhere but my brain's um yes uh so the the final piece is you know a jazzy one so it's sort of you know going from um well it's sort of a, a timeline I don't know which way the camera's facing uh <laughs> of uh dates uh forward in time um of you know what the the trumpet can do from a baroque march to a, a light fun piece and then a, a jazz jazzy thing to finish they're very cool pieces i'm really glad you've chosen all of them are so they're just so varied and so much fun i think we're going to have i mean the whole program for projects is toe tapping and finger clicking so it, it's going to be it, it's going to be great for all of you guys on projects can't wait to um well for you to meet these these amazing musicians and for us to play different music oh another poll mm. our final poll is katie's poll number three which is her favorite sweets are she loves sweets apparently and her favorite ones are skittles starburst lemon sherbets fruit pastels percy pigtails or dolly mixtures see i could have them all <gasps> i mean you know i do have a favorite in there but the favorite is because <laughs> no, i'm not going to give you a hint no hints um but no i i i i I do have a soft spot. I'm not allowed to eat them because my dentist says it's bad. And my husband tries to keep me onto that. So he he reduces my sweet intake. But if I could, I would eat loads. What would you have off that list, Erin? What would be your favorite? Well, I was about to say, I the way the Dolly mixtures has exploded my brain, <laughs> that 
was my obsession when I was a kid, Aww. fully. And I completely forgot that that was even a thing. You gotta try some Wow! Yeah. Oh my goodness, right. Uh, where's Here we go. I need to, I'm going to the only mixture. There we go, so here's some answers. <laughs> oh, lemon sherbet. Okay. Oh, I so thought lemon those were a bit strange, actually. Are those the ones that when you bite in them, there's some fizzy stuff inside? Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know about those. But actually, at the bottom of the heap is Dolly mixtures. So which is it then, Katie? Oh, well, you know, there are lots of favorites, but actually it was the Dolly mixtures. And I tell you why, because my grandparents, my mum's parents live near us in Canada and they were British and their family used to send them Dolly mixtures from England and they used to store them in the fridge. And we were allowed one or two individual Dolly, like, you know, doling them out by the one. Exactly. Think of how small that is. And they were lived in the fridge and they'd flown over from Can from England and we were allowed one or two when we visited. And so they had they had this special meaning to me. You know, I just they, they remind me of that day of getting them out of the fridge, you know, in the tin. <laughs> Who I know what we need what we need to bring to these project weekends now is Dolly Mixture. <laughs> not allowed to eat them. It's bad for your teeth, isn't it? Oh, you have to be. It is. Yeah. Yeah, but I well, see. we could give you one or two little tiny ones, maybe. On the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> Keep them fresh. Great. Yeah. Right. We need to do our webinar selfie because we need okay. to wrap this up. Okay. Even it's too much fun. Okay. Oh, so, have you got anything? I have got. Okay. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to put Katie, Katie you're going to love this, by the way, Katie. I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm. <laughs> I'm. I'm sad. I'm not coming to your your sessions in London. I have to say, I'm looking forward to that. That replica <laughs> sounds amazing. There we go. I think I have a really good hat here. <laughs> you can imagine it, it's nor it's obviously not normally my hat but you know it could be, could be. see this is what but i'm not going to say that it's going to be really confusing to people that look at this photo okay oh <laughs> yes <laughs> oh I okay oh oh can you give me one second i have something to add to that okay go one go second. if she brought her a trumpet i'm i'm i will be yeah, I'll be mindful. Something better than, sorry, not better than a trumpet. Hey! <laughs> yes! There we go. You've given me some inspiration. See, and I have the other half here, but of course I'm a violist, so I don't know how to hold it. You should hold that on the other side, Aaron. Huh? Because you're not, you're not a violinist, so hold it the other way. Oh. And then you see? And then. And then we're going to get a million people writing in if you do that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready? Okay. okay ready? So we'll do a countdown for everybody. Three, two, one. Fantastic. Great. Okay. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing them, seeing all the selfies, send them into us on the Dropbox on the website. And um, if everybody's happy, we'll share this on YouTube so you can catch up with it. And uh, if, you, if, if you've got friends you haven't seen it, and also watch it again if you want to see all the fun again. And, um, and, and we'll share some of the pictures, hopefully on the socials, some of the webinar selfies. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. An amazing thank you to Erin and Katie, not only for today, but also for being part of the NCO team uh, for 2022. And we are so much looking forward to seeing you live and in person, finally, uh, in, a, in a few weeks' time. So massive round of applause to you all. And thank you, thank you very much. And we'll see you soon. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.